Previously, I showed you how to install the Sonoff iFin 04-L. One of the biggest problems with this is that this controller module is huge. It can only fit in one of my fan, and the other fans, it cannot fit at all because the fan cover is not big enough to cover this whole thing. Another turn off is that this uses Wi-Fi, meaning in order to control remotely, you have to use the app, and who knows if this is reporting back to the uh, China server or somewhere else. So those are the only two big turnoffs for this Sonoff fan module. Obviously, there's a way to block it from ever getting on the internet, but that's not easy for a lot of people. So today, I'm going to show you how to install these three wireless fan module controller. This is a bulk package, so you're actually getting three remotes and three fan modules to control three ceiling fans, not just one. This is a great price if you have a lot of fans in the house, like myself. These remotes are actually 433 megahertz, so you can actually use Home Assistant to control them remotely if you want. This thing is all local, so that means there's no Wi-Fi app and no way to ever get online. The first thing you need to do is remove this ceiling cover. Most of the time, it's just two screws that you have to loosen and then this thing slides straight down. This will expose a bunch of wires. When you see a bunch of these wires, don't be intimidated. All you have to do is remove each of these nuts and remove the old fan controller if there is one. In this case, there's no fan controller. Oh yeah, before you even work on this, make sure that the fan switch on the cover is turned off. Or if there's no fan switch on the wall, go ahead and go down to the circuit breaker, most likely in your basement, and then turn that off. I definitely don't want anybody to get electrocuted working on this project. Here's the fan controller module itself. As you can see, it's really tiny. The remote uses two AAA batteries, so this thing is tiny, okay? All of the wires are color-coded, so this goes into your mains. If you're in the United States, one of them is white and the other one should be black. On the other side, you got four wires. One of the wires is wireless. You don't need to touch it at all. You don't need to worry about that at all. When you pop the fan cover off, you should see three wires coming from the fan itself. So the three wires should be blue, white, and black. And just match those up with this fan controller. Blue to blue, white to white, and black to black. So this is how I fit mine into the ceiling. There should be two wires, black and white, coming from the ceiling. That's your mains power, by the way. And on the right hand side, you can see that there's three wires coming from the fan, from the bottom of the fan, coming right up. Three of these will go into the three wires that I mentioned earlier. I connect them all using Wago nuts. I found that Wago nuts are super secure. There are alternatives out there, and I'm going to share the links if you want something cheaper, but honestly, they are not as good as Wago nuts. So once more, this is mains power. It's black, black to red into the Wago nuts, white to white. Green is your ground wires, and they all go together in one Wago nut. Blue to blue, white to white, and black to black. And that's basically it. For my fan, in order to cover it up, all I have to do is slide the cover back up again and then tighten these two screws. Because my cover is made out of metal, I didn't want to cover the antenna as well. So that's why I left the antenna coming out of the cover. That way, the wireless signal can easily reach this antenna without any interference, without any blockage from this uh, metal cover. These two switches on the wall here and here used to control the fan, meaning all I have to do is just flip it on and the fan will automatically kick in. But because I want to control this all wirelessly and via the Home Assistant app, I have to make sure that this switch will always be on, otherwise there's no way to control the fan via the remote. So if your setup is like mine, make sure that this is in the off position before you start installing anything. And once you're done with installation, flip this back to the on position. This to the on position as well. As soon as your fan module gets powered up for the first time, make sure you're near the remote and the remote has batteries in it and press and hold this button right here, lights on and off, and the high speed. Press these two buttons for about three seconds and then this remote should synchronize with the fan module. And now you should be able to control the fan using this remote. These buttons are pretty much self-explanatory. You got the low speed button for the fan, medium speed, high speed, turn the fan off. If your fan has a light, go ahead and use this button to turn on and off. At night, when you go to sleep, you might not want the fan to be turned on all throughout the night, so you can press this 2-hour button, and then 2 hours later, the fan will turn off to save some electricity. 
Now, as mentioned earlier before, if for whatever reason somebody flipped the switch back to the off position, then obviously there's no way the fan module gets power and then there's no way you can control it via the remote. So make sure that this is on the on position always, no matter what, if you want to control the fan using the remote. Now, if you want to 3D print something to prevent people from hitting the switch to the off position, then go to Thingiverse and print this cover out. Basically, this cover will block the decor switch from ever getting flipped into the off position. Or if you want, you can always remove this decor switch and then hot wire the two wires together to make sure that the fan module will always get power no matter what. From this perspective, you can see that there's two switches. One is to turn the light on and the other one is to control the fan speed. Because you just install this remote module in, there's no way you can manually adjust the speed or adjust the light anymore. I don't know why, but I think that's kind of sucky. It would have been nice if I can still toggle it manually via these pull switches, but nope. As mentioned earlier, this fan module is 433 MHz. Unfortunately, there's no way you can use the Sonoff RF bridge to control it. If you want to control it using an app, you'll have to use this Broadlink RM4 Pro. This lets you control IR devices as well as RF devices, which this fan module is. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use this universal remote with Home Assistant so you can control basically everything in your house, including this fan module. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this installation video. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, and thanks for watching.